Hey everyone, this is Dr. Gonzalez, and today on this video we are going to discuss the cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, and the control of the eye movements. Before we get started, some of the learning objectives that you're going to be seeing today is to recognize and identify the eye muscles and cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. Then we're going to restate the gross anatomy of the cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 through the cranium, and then we're going to classify each nerve. So the eyeball is moved by muscles within the orbit, and in total we have six muscles, four rectus muscles and two oblique muscles. In here you can observe the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, the lateral rectus muscle, and the medial rectus muscle. We also have two oblique muscles, the superior oblique, and the inferior oblique. The origin of the rectus muscles, it's going to be the common tendinous ring on the posterior wall of the orbit. And on this view, we can see it right here. If I hide this structure, you would see it posteriorly. Here's the common tendinous ring. And the insertion of the muscles is the sclera of the eye. Meanwhile, the origin of the superior oblique is from the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, and the origin of the inferior oblique is from the maxillary bone inside of the inferior orbital rim. The actions of the extraocular muscles is as it goes. Let's get started with the superior rectus. The superior rectus typically is going to direct the pupil upward. The inferior rectus, it's going to direct the pupil downward. The lateral rectus, it's going to direct the pupil laterally. And the medial rectus is going to direct the pupil medially. So typically these muscles will do exactly as their name implies. Now, the actions of the superior oblique and inferior oblique are going to be basically contrary to their name to what their name implies so the superior oblique directs the pupil downward and the inferior oblique directs the pupil upward so in terms of the ocular movements the horizontal movements are going to be controlled entirely by the medial and lateral rectus muscle so they're going to be doing basically a deduction which is towards the nose and abduction, which is away from the nose. Then the vertical movements require the coordinated action of the superior and inferior recti, as well as the oblique muscles for elevation and depression. And the muscles that are responsible for movements of the eye along the three different axes. For example, we're going to have primarily performed by the oblique muscles such as in torsion, which brings the top of the eye towards the nose, and extortion, which brings the top of the eye away from the nose. And in here, you can observe that the cranial nerves will be exiting through the superior orbital fissure, which is located here on the orbit on the area of the sphenoid bone. You can observe here, this is the superior orbital fissure. So the three cranial nerves abducens, trochlear and the oculomotor are going to be exiting through the superior orbital fissure. Now let's classify each nerve to the respective eye muscle. So in here we're going to get started with the oculomotor nerves and the oculomotor nerve is cranial nerve number three. This one functions to control the extraocular eye muscles specifically remember it's going to be the superior inferior medial rectus as well as the inferior oblique and the levator palpebra superioris. The origin of this cranial nerve is the midbrain, as you can observe here, and the foramen is the superior orbital fissure, as I mentioned before. Also, the ocular motor nerves have autonomic fibers that synapse in the ciliary ganglion to control the ciliary body and the constrictor pupilla. So the oculomotor nerve has two motor nuclei, and the oculomotor nucleus 
which is somatic. This nuclei lies in the midbrain, particularly at the level of the superior colliculi, which you can observe right here. And there's also an accessory oculomotor nucleus called the Edigen Westphal nucleus. And this one has the parasympathetic fibers or the visceral fibers. Particularly, the oculomotor nerve has two branches, as you can observe right here. There's going to be a superior branch and an inferior branch. The superior branch innervates the levator palpebra superioris as well as the superior rectus. Meanwhile, that inferior branch is going to innervate the medial rectus, the inferior oblique muscle, and the inferior rectus muscle. And there's also a branch of that inferior branch that passes through the ciliary ganglion. As I said, remember, there's going to be parasympathetic fibers going into the ciliary body and the constrictor pupilla. Now, cranial nerve number four is the trochlear nerve. The functions of this nerve is to control the superior oblique muscle. The origin is the midbrain. And the foramen is also the superior orbital fissure, as you can observe right here. So one formula for you to remember is SO4, superior oblique trochlear nerve, cranial nerve number four. One motor nucleus, it's the trochlear nucleus. This lies at the level of the inferior colliculus. It's the smallest cranial nerve, this trochlear nerve. And it emerges from the dorsal aspect of the midbrain. And then it decussates within the brainstem. So the trochlear nerve is the only nerve that exits the brain dorsally and is crossed. So the cell bodies in the trochlear nucleus, this is where it origins. And the nerve, the fibers, will cross to the contralateral side before emerging from the brain. And then it exits the orbit. Lastly, we have the abducens nerve or cranial nerve number six. Here's the abducens. And the functions is to innervate the lateral rectus eye muscle. The origin of this nerve is the pons, and it also passes through the superior orbital fissure. The origin of the abducens nerve is on the pons, and specifically the cell bodies in the abducens nucleus. The nerve or the axons exit the brain to the orbit, and the innervation, like I mentioned before, is the lateral rectus. One last thing that I want to mention is that the abducens nerve, the reason that it's called abducens, it's because the function of the muscle is to abduct the eye, therefore abducens for abduction. So in summary, don't forget that we have four rectus muscles and two oblique muscles. There's going to be a superior, medial, lateral, and inferior rectus muscle and a superior and inferior oblique muscle. Don't forget about the formula SO4LR6OM3. SO4 is the superior oblique four cranial nerve. LR6 is the lateral rectus, cranial nerve number six. OM is the other muscles, cranial nerve number three. Don't forget also that the cranial nerves three and four come from the midbrain. They pass via the cavernous sinus, cross the superior orbital fissure, and then enter the orbit. And then the cranial nerve number six comes from the pons, passes via the cavernous sinus, crosses the superior orbital fissure, and enter the orbit. And lastly, don't forget that the cranial nerve number three also has parasympathetic fibers from the Edigen Westphal oculomotor nucleus, or the accessory oculomotor nucleus which communicates with the ciliary ganglion to control the ciliary muscles and the constrictor pupilla.